This is Jamie here with the Sensitive Artist Podcast. We're here with my good friend, the incredible filmmaker based out of Taos, New Mexico, Stephanie Gardner. Welcome. Hey. Hi, Jamie. Hi, everybody. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into filmmaking. Woo, how much time do we have? (laughs) Well, basically, as a kid, I was always into writing and directing, and I wrote full-length plays and musical comedies as early as when I was six through the age of 26. Yeah. I basically got seduced by filmmaking out of the theater. I went to grad school to study playwriting, but I went to a school that was very strong in their film studies. And I kind of, it was a natural shift for me because filmmaking combined all the elements of of the arts and the creative arts that, that I was attracted to that I could do all together in one in one piece of expression so what brought you to Taos well I was touring with a short film of mine if I had a piano I'd play the blues Mm -hmm. and it was doing the film festival tour around the world and the Taos Shorts Film Festival was one of its last stops and it's where we met (laughs) where where we met yes except I think we met a year after that oh we did yeah when I after I moved yeah so my my film screened in Taos and it was one of the best festivals I'd ever Mm -hmm. been to their curation was fabulous and I just got enchanted by the mountains and the creative quirky spirits Mm -hmm. up in Taos and um, ended up moving a year later so tell us about your new big project you're working on so I created a project called 33 and me when I turned 33 last November I decided to travel to over 33 countries around the world to meet and engage with other filmmakers who are also 33. So we are going to over 33 countries and I'm interviewing and spending a week to two weeks with 33 old filmmakers, one from each country. That's an incredible project. I'm so excited about it. And I know you're going on several different legs. So you got rid of your home, you know, most of your stuff's in storage. I mean, you're pretty much traveling full time. I'm a nomad for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Cinema nomad, you're you too. Cinema nomad. (laughs) That's right. And uh, I should say there are three components to the project. So Mm -hmm. we are making a TV show along the way. It's going to be an episodic documentary TV series where each country is an episode. And it's a travel show, but we travel through the eyes and experiences of a 33-year-old filmmaker from that country. Uh, And we're exploring the past, present, and future of cinema in each place. And then we're also going to make a documentary feature film at the very end after we've gone through all the 33 plus countries and that'll kind of more sum up my journey right. through the whole multi-year project of traveling the world and meeting people and then the third component which I'm most excited about is film festival so after we visit all the countries we're going to have a film festival where we screen at least one film from each one of the 33 33 year old filmmakers from 33 countries so it'll be truly a global festival. And then we intend to actually package that up and travel the world with the festival itself. So you get a TV series, you get a documentary <laughs> feature, and you get a global film festival. That's fantastic. How are you finding these 33-year-old filmmakers? It's um, a variety of ways. And it's actually the question I get asked the most. People mm-hmm. find it hard to believe that there are that many 33-year-old filmmakers in the world, but there there are. It's been incredible. I went to grad school for film in in an international school, so a lot of my colleagues are spread around the world, world, so a lot of it has been through word of mouth. My collaborator is the director of an international film festival, and he's been running it for 13 years, so he also has a database of filmmakers all over the world. Now, they're not all 33, but what ends up happening is we reach out to our contacts in different countries and say, hey, how do we find the most amazing 33-year-old filmmaker in your country? And sometimes it's through film festivals. Sometimes it's through film schools. Sometimes it's completely random where I know somebody who lived in another country and they still have friends there and they they help put me in touch with the filmmaking community or whatnot. So we found them in a variety of different ways. Wow. Well, you started your journey, I know, by taking a DNA test. Yeah. So tell us how that kind of led to where you were going to start out. Yeah, we wanted to tie in ancestry. I mean, there's there's a lot going on in this project and the whys and and for a lot of people, 33 is like a spiritual, mystical, master number. 
a lot of cultures put an emphasis on the, the word 33. And for me, it was about kind of growing up and being at a stage in my career where I, I have a lot of accomplishments under my belt, and yet I have so much further to go. Right. And so I guess there's something about a journey this grand about who am I? Yeah. You know, who am I? Where do I come from? And where am I going? Those are the ultimate questions we're all asking ourselves. And I think the thirties is kind of a prime age to, to ask sure. these big questions. <laughs> like I know where I've been and I know where I want to go. How do I get there? Well, you look back to where you're from sometimes. And so doing our, my ancestry was kind of a way to, to rediscover my roots. And my aunt, my aunt Audrey in Emmaus, Pennsylvania, she had told me that she did her DNA ancestry. You know, our family was always told we were like mostly German and with my mom's side of the family, also French. And yet I never knew a lot about my real roots, my ancestry. And my aunt said that when she was a teenager, she went to Germany or a young adult, maybe early 20s, she went to Germany and she thought that she would have this profound experience connecting with, you know, her heritage. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, it was okay, but I didn't love it. I didn't feel this great deep connection. But then on that same trip, she went to Denmark and she really just felt connected and she felt this powerful feeling of she loved the place and the people and the culture. And, you know, now 50 some later, she's done her DNA ancestry and learned that she's actually more Scandinavian than she is German. Wow. And that kind of inspired me to look into my roots. It turns out I'm 70% Swiss, which I never knew. And it's still French and German. I'm, I'm 70% a mix of French and German and, and a few other things, but more from where the geographical Switzerland is today. Mm -hmm. So we thought that would be the perfect place to start this journey. We are also going to end there. We're going to do, we're probably going to do more than 33 countries actually in the end. And we're going to come back to, to Switzerland to kind of see, to reflect on the year, the years actually by the end, it'll have been several years to reflect on the journey of what, what we learned, how I grew and maybe do some more research into my ancestry. And it's the home of the, the UN, you know, right. Geneva, the UN, it's a, it's a peaceful country so we thought it was really a symbolically a great Perfect. place to yeah, start absolutely well tell us a little bit about some of the places you've been and kind of the things that you learned about this you know these diverse group of people that you're meeting sure so we've done eight we have eight countries under our belt including the switzerland one switzerland was featuring me and introducing the project. So we've done seven other filmmakers today. We've done France, Belgium, Iceland, Cuba, Mexico, Romania, and Turkey. Oh, wow. It's each one has been more amazing than the last. And we're learning and growing ourselves as we, as we go on. So after the first couple, we kind of found a, a flow and a formula of what we're trying to accomplish in each place because it is episodic TV at the end of the day. Right. You know, we know, okay, we want to do X, Y, and Z with each filmmaker. But what's been amazing is that each filmmaker has been totally unique and impressive and inspiring in their own lives and careers and, and within their countries. It's just re been remarkable to kind of each new country and each new episode for me to unravel, to uncover what their story is and what the story of 33 and me for that country will be through their their struggles and challenges and successes are each country just has its own unique culture and colors and sights sure. and sounds so it's it's just been visually delightful as well what are you discovering about some of these 33 year old filmmakers it's a great question and actually it's part of the projects i'm really excited about is discovering that answer we are still at a very early stage in the process so i don't you know truly know the sure. answer yet but what has been exciting is how unique and individual each one mm -hmm. of them is and so there are similarities in that we all have to find a way to make it happen for ourselves we all have to hustle and find funding and find an audience and and go through the creative process and that in itself is challenging and Everyone says, you know, as you're exploring here, everyone's creative process is very different. And that for me is really exciting to experience how each one of these filmmakers 
tackles just being a creative person as a filmmaker. And, and it's interesting to see they've all been so, so different, which is cool, but they've also all been so inspiring. So it's really neat to see that there are so many unique people and ways of doing it, but also each country has their own specific cinema culture. And I've been really interested in delving into that and how does the filmmaker fit into that or not and what the history of that is. Because some countries really support filmmakers. So some some filmmakers' challenges and or successes are directly related to the countries they live in. Like in Cuba, there wasn't even an independent filmmaking scene until our generation. And it's still brand new and it's still sort of not entirely legal. But there are gray areas. And then because it's been a very government controlled industry for so many years that now the government's starting to catch on that there are like little more freedoms happening in Cuba over the years. This younger generation, our age and, and slightly older actually are truly the first generation of independent filmmakers, but Cuba has had a long history of, of cinema. So it's just been interesting to see how each country and place also shapes who the filmmaker is. And there and we're mostly focused on filmmakers who are from a country and decided to stay and live and work. Maybe not maybe some of them didn't have a choice of, to go anywhere else, but we're focused on filmmakers who are from a country and working in that country. Tell us some of the things that you've had to tweak or maybe that you didn't think would be an unexpected challenge along the way. Yeah, I mean, there are lots, <laughs> but uh, all the challenges have been rewarding nonetheless. I think I was mentally prepared for the challenges of filmmaking. I've, sure. I've, it never gets easier each each film is that I've done has become more ambitious than the last. So in a sense, it gets harder, even though I get more experience. Okay. So mentally, I was prepared for, okay, this is an ambitious filmmaking project. But what I was less prepared for was how challenging all the other elements of like travel coordinating would be. Right. So and and everything takes so much time. I mean, for instance, we we need visas for a lot of these countries we're going to. And some of them are really simple and some of them are, are quite complex. And you need to time it out properly. And they're expensive. And then, you know, for this next big leg we're going on, we need a lot of vaccinations. And even that is time and money. And uh, some vaccinations, you need to get multiple ones. You need to get boosters like, you know, six months from now, or some of them are a week and then three weeks and then six months. Just scheduling over 33 filmmakers in over 33 countries, let alone finding them, scheduling them, booking flights. I mean, booking flights is one of the more stressful things. So the logistics of it has been really challenging. From a filmmaking point of view, the most challenging thing for me has been the social media stuff and trying to keep up with logging type of outreach in addition to filming for the actual series and the documentary. And, you know, right now, the only way to cultivate an audience is through social media because we're releasing our episodes further down the line, but we still want to build an audience before we release it. Cinema Nomad YouTube. <laughs> Give me a little fun. <laughs> and, and so those, <laughs> but there are some really good like travel bloggers out mm -hmm. there and they're doing it full time. And the, and the thing is, we're trying to also travel blog and yet it's on the side of filming for a TV series and oh, sure. a documentary and doing this big project on top of it yes. full time. So I've, I, for the, I have struggled with that. And also just being on camera has been a bit of a challenge for me. I, yeah. um, I'm enjoying it, but at first I was a bit camera shy and it's, it's taken me a while to actually get comfortable being on screen constantly. And that's that. where the blogging mm -hmm. for me is challenging. Because when I'm on screen for the episodes, I'm engaging with the filmmakers and whatnot. But a lot of times when I'm blogging, it's just, you know, me talking to a camera. And I, it just doesn't right. come naturally to me. No, I absolutely get that. I have the same, <laughs> same feelings about it. Absolutely. Okay, so where are you headed we have a really exciting leg coming up, um, and it's also going to be challenging because it's our by far our biggest leg. We're going to more countries, back to back, more diverse city of places. We're going to be on four different continents. It's a longer leg, so it's really this will be a, a 
a good test to see how well we do on the road for this long. But we are starting in Brazil and then we go to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Ghana, and Nigeria. And then we head over to possibly Azerbaijan and then Uzbekistan, Poland, and Russia. Ambitious. Yeah. So this is our next leg. And that'll take us, it's just through early November to mid November ish. That's exciting. How long do you see the whole project lasting? I guess right now, where are you in the middle of that project as far well, as time wise? We've done eight. Um, we It'll be a year this November. So what's that? Eight, nine months this far? This far? And it'll, it'll probably take us another year come November. So all in all, it'll probably have taken us two years at least to get to all the countries we're trying to go. Now we're advertising it as 33, but in reality, we're trying to get to 30, 38. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of, there are a couple of regions we wanted to make sure we hit and we wanted to hit every continent on a kind of proportionate level. And sure. I think Africa is such a big, diverse continent that we're actually by the end, probably going to go to seven or eight African countries just to show the different parts of Africa as much as possible. Um, Same with South America. We'll probably go to four or five, you know, then we haven't even hit Asia yet. So, but then there are little regions within each continent, like the, um, like Uzbekistan is within all these, the the stands I call them. We want to go to at least one, like it was either Kazakhstan or Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. We chose Uzbekistan. I want to go to the Baltic. So it's like, we're trying to hit each region proportionately because it's more than just trying to make a TV show or a film. It's really for me about the actual experience of interacting with filmmakers from all these different countries to see how they think and feel about their lives and careers and to see, you know, we're all the same age and the same profession. What's our similarities? What's our differences? And, you know, in a sense, it's a little sociological experiment Mm -hmm. and you know, it's a personal experience just because I want to connect with each one and connect them to each other. I hope at the end to have a, a global network of filmmakers that we can all connect with each other and then we can share our stories with the rest of the world. And I, I kind of want to help give a vehicle to these filmmakers to show their work all over the world. And so for me, it's it's more than just making a TV show. It's really about trying to hit as many regions as possible. And then that'll be about two years because we need to spend at least seven to 10 days in each country. So at least the filming will take two years. Now we do intend to start releasing the series before we finish filming. We'll we'll ultimately have three seasons of a TV show if we hit all 38. And if, where can they follow your, the project and where can they find out about all these releases? For now, uh, Cinema Nomad on YouTube, subscribe to that. And this next big leg we're going on, we're going to be a lot more active in terms of social media and putting out little updates of where we are and what we're doing. Cinema Nomad on YouTube. We've got 33andMe Films on Instagram. We post pictures. Uh, And then 33andMe1 on Twitter. Twitter. (laughs) <laughs> on Twitter, Twitter. and uh, <laughs> we are just building our website, our official website now, which is 33andmefilms.com. And I'll put links to all of these at thesensitiveartist.com so you can just Perfect. go to the website. And on, on 33andmefilms.com, we will ultimately have basically a, a page for each of our filmmakers so that once you go on, you can kind of click by country. And you can see, okay, we got Susan in Turkey, we got Diane in Cuba, we got Atson in Mexico. And you can kind of get a little intro to who they are, get a little teaser to their episode that'll come out in the seasons and series. How exciting. So yeah, I think once we really get the website up and going down the road, it'll it'll be a nice interactive tool to explore these countries and the filmmakers that we're we're meeting. Gosh, what a wonderful project. Thank you so much for coming and talking about it. And I yeah, can't wait to see it all through and follow your journey. Thanks, Jamie. It's been a pleasure being here. Mm-hmm.